Lars Piscina of Clusium, by the nine gods he swore, that the great house of Tarquin should suffer wrong no more. By the nine gods he swore it, and named a trusting day, and bade his messengers ride forth, east and west and south and north, to summon his array. East and west and south and north, the messengers ride fast, and tower and town and cottage has heard the trumpets blast. Shame on the false Etruscan who lingers in his home, when Piscina of Clusium is on the march for Rome. The horsemen and the footmen are pouring in a main, for many a stately marketplace, for many a fruitful plain, for many a lonely hamlet which hid by beech tree pine, like an eagle's nest hangs on the crest of purple apennine. From lordly Velatri, where scowls of far famed hold, piled by the hands of giants, for godlike kings as old. From Sega Populonia, who sentinels to the sky, Sardinia snowy mountain tops, fringing the southern sky. From the proud march of Pisae, queen of the western waves, where rides the city's triremes, heavy with fair haired slaves. From where sweet Clarice wanders, through corns and vines and flowers. For where Cortona lifts to heaven her dire Denver towers, tall are the oaks who they call, strong and dark horses will, fat and stags to tap the boughs of this minion hill. Beyond all streams, Cortona's is to the herdsman dear, best of all pools the fowler loves the grateful singing mere. But now the stroke of woodman is heard by horses will, no hunter tracks the stag's green path up this minion hill. Unwatched the long clitonus grazes the milk white steer. Unharmed the water fowl may dip in the Nevalsinian mere. The harvest of Arishium this year on men shall leap. This year young boys in Umbro shall plunge the struggling sheep. And in the vats of Luna this year the must shall foam. Round the white feet of laughing girls who sighs a march to Rome. They be thirty chosen prophets, the wisest of the land, who was by last seen her, both morn and evening stand. Evening and morn the thirty have turned their births all, traced by the right of linen white by mighty seers of yore. And with one voice the thirty have their glad answer given. Go forth, go forth, last Piscina, go forth, beloved of heaven. Go and return in glory to Clusium's royal dome, and hang round Nurse's altars the golden shields of own. And now hath every city set up a tale of men, the foot of fourscore thousand, the horse of thousand ten. Before the gates of Sutrium is met a great way, a proud man was last seen upon an interesting day. For all the Etruscan armies were ranged beneath his eye, and many a banished Roman and many a stout ally. And with a mighty following to join the must decay, the Etruscan owned Mamilius, prince of Asian name. But by the yellow Tiber was tumult and affront. From all the spacious champaign to Rome, men took their life. A mile around the city, the throng stopped up to wave. For every sight of sight was to see the jewel on nights and days. For age of folks on clutches, a woman great with child. And mothers sobbing over babes that clung to them and smiled. And sick men born in litters, high on their necks of slaves, and troops of sunburned husbandmen with weeping hooks and staves, and droves of mules and asses, laden with skins and wines, and endless flocks of goats and sheep, and endless herds of kine, and endless trains of wagons that creep beneath the weight of corn sacks from house of goods with every roaring gate. Now from the rock campaign, could one burger spy the light of the blazing villages red in the midnight sky. The fathers of the city, they sat all night and day, day. For every hour some horsemen came with tidings of dismay. To eastward and to westward has spread the Tuscan bands. No house, nor fence, nor dove could boost a mare in stands. Verbena down to Ostia hath wasted all the plain. As to have stormed Janiculum, the stout guards are slain. I wist in all the Senate there was no heart so bold, but saw a day to the master beat when that all news was told. Forth with up rose the consul, up rose the fathers all, in haste she girded up their gowns and hide them to the wall. Again, the held up council standing before the great gate, sure time was there, you well may guess, for musing or debate. Out spake the consul roundly, the bridge must straight go down, for since the Janiculum is lost, what hope to save the town? Then the scout came blind, all wild with haste and air. To arms, to arms, the consul, last Messina is here! On the 
the lowing hills to westward, the consul fixed his eye and saw the swarthy storm of dust rise fast along the sky. And nearer, faster, nearer to the red whirlwind come. And loud as still, as still, more loud from underneath that rolling cloud is heard the trumpet's warning cry, the trampling and the hum. And plainly, and more plainly, now through the gloom of appears. Far to left and far to right, through broken gleams of dark moonlight, the long array of helmets bright, the long array of spears, and plainly and more plainly, above that glimmering line, now might you see the banners of twelve fair cities shine, but the banner of our Malthusium was highest of them all, for the terror of the Umbria and the terror of the Gaul, and plainly and more plainly, now might the burghers show, their port and vest by mortar crested all like new. Simone, but the stillness of Orishim on a sweet road was seen, and Aster of the four fell chilled girl with band, none else may wield. To Lunas with the belt of gold, and dark Rabina flung the hold by the Thrasimene. Fast by the boy standard, a looking o'er the wall. Last, the scene of Lucium sat in his ivory car. By the, by the right, right wheel woman beneath his prince of the nation name, and by the left fell Sextus aboard the deed of shame. And when the face of Sextus was seen among the foes, a yell that rent the firmament from all the town arose. On the housetop was no woman that spat towards him and hissed, no child that screamed out curses and shook his little fist. But the consul's brow was sad, and the consul's speech was low, and darkly looked he out the wall, and darkly at the foe. Then the man will be upon us before the bridge goes down. And if they want to win the bridge, what hope to save the town? And out spake brave Horatius, the captain of the gate, to every man upon this earth, death cometh sooner or late. And how could man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods? And for the tender mother who dangled him to rest, and for the wife who nurses his baby at her breast, and for the holy maidens who feed the eternal flame, to save them from all sexes that brought the deed of shame. You down a bit, Sir Consul, with all speed, speed you may. I with two more to help me to hold the firm plain. And yon straight past the thousand may you well be stopped by thee. But who will stand on my right hand and keep the bridge with thee? Then the out spake spirit is luscious, so angry and proud was he. Lo, I will stand on thy right hand and keep the bridge with thee. And now strength strong and many a temptation lad was he. I will abide on thy left side to keep the bridge with thee. For they should the as thou sayest, so let it be. And straight against that great way forth went the dawn of the sea. And Romans and Romans quarrels but neither land nor gold, nor son, nor wife, nor limb, nor life in the brave days of old. Then that was for a party, then all were for state. Then the great man helped the poor, and the poor man loved the great. Then land were fairly portioned, their spoils were fairly sold. The Romans were like, like brothers in the brave days of old. Now Roman is to Roman, more hateful than a foe. And the tribunes be the high, and the fathers cry the low. As we wax hot in faction, in battle we wax cold. The former man fought as they fought in the brave days of old. Now, while the wheel were tightening, the harnesses on their backs, the consul was the foremost man to take a hand and axe. And fathers mixed with commons, each hatchet to bar and crow, and loosed it upon the planks to laugh, and loosed the props below. Meanwhile, the Tuscan army, but glorious to behold, came flashing back the noonday light, rank behind rank like surges by the broad sea of gold. Four hundred trumpets sounded, a peal of warlike glee. But that great host with measured tread, with the spears advanced and then tried to bend, slowly towards the bridge's head, where stood the dauntless three.